I was thinking about shit as I was driving around as I often do. I mean not drive around often, but think when I'm driving. Nothing else better to do. So, <laughs> I was thinking about the human condition, or I guess at least what I've put as the human condition, and I was thinking about what truth looks like, and how much truth in the world is unfortunately subjective. And that that becomes, I think, a great part of the human condition, is that it's difficult to have objective truth on things that really matter and drive the world. Instead, all those truths are subjective. Like, missiles flying from Hamas, once again, into Israel, and they are firing back. And it's the same story as always, and all kinds of other information comes into play with this. And so, really, the truth is actually objective. There is an objective truth to find in all of that. But because of people's biases and wanton of their own information in their, you know, their world structure, they, uh, you know, it, truth becomes subjective. Human condition. My truth versus your truth. It's like, uh, it's why I don't think anything will ever really be truly peaceful in a sense. Now, I guess since I do talk a lot about this uh, occult religion that goes on in the world, and I guess the actual religions in the world and the things that they say and do or whatever, might as well talk about that too. So, I mean, you can see, uh, I keep referencing that Three World War Manzini Pike letter, right? And it's like, if you think about that, if that's what is going on, if it is, I can't actually verify that letter is real one way or another, honestly, other than that it just sure seems eerily true. But you end up with uh, ultimately, <clears throat> I think, you know, they, it sounds like they want to shatter all religions kind of thing, you know, and just recreate just a new one religion system. One world, one language, one religion, one everything. So you're completely. Uh, autonomous, I guess, to each other, um, or able to, you know, it's all, all, uh, same OS, same operating system, you know, completely cohesive. I'm sure they know that just as well as anyone else does. I mean, you know, Jordan Peterson and various other psychs talk about being in a cohesive society is kind of a good thing. It's more peaceful, but who knows what he said and did in the United Nations. Actually, I should look that up. I have seen some people who have dove into Peterson a little bit to find some of the interesting quirks in him, and he isn't necessarily all he seems to be either. But you know, then you know that gets back to objective and subjective truth again with guys like him talking. You know, there's a whole bunch of people who love him and agree, and there's a whole bunch of people who don't, and that's the science of psychology at its best. You know, so whatever. I think that's about all I'm going to say about that. Just a little fucking blurb on thinking about how do you view truth and how do you find truth and, you know, how do you give it to other people too? I mean, that's one of the things, right? You talk about red pilling. It's another, uh, it's kind of a subjective term. Depends on what people want to coin it as. There's nothing really official about it, you know? So, I mean, you know, you want to get the truth to people, but, you know, it's just, like, so hard. People just ultimately believe what they want to believe, and it always ends up being emotionally attached. So, you know, I guess that's kind of the trick, is if you can put your emotions down and step back, can you objectively find the truth with what's going on by tons of research and discernment? You know, that word is so huge. You know, to truly discern something as big as the world issues, like with the stuff I was just talking about. What does it take to get to the bottom of something like that? It's tons of research. <laughs> and you have to put your feelings down to really get to the truth on it, right? And I think that uh, anytime you feel an emotional reaction from someone, that you've just stung their version of the truth, right? I had a fight with a friend of mine, and it's kind of a sad thing. But I tried saying, because I knew we don't get along. I knew 
certain things were going to come up because they always do. And I was like, you know, the thing is with a person's belief structure is it's their complete view of the world. It's assembled. They have built it. The foundation, the framework, the walls, the insulation, the roof, the whole everything of the world that they know, the belief of it is all contained in that structure. And when you come along and start insisting it's something else, people get testy, right? Because if you take one part out of it, it's going to be a lot of work to build it back up again. You've essentially just ruined it or said mine's not good enough or various other things that a person's mind will go to, right? So if you can't detach from your emotion, then you can't find the truth. I was thinking about Bruce Lee the other day because I used to read like I said, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, I was into reading the Tao in there too and stuff, and he said something along the lines of, don't stand for this or that. Instead, stand sort of, I guess, objectively in the middle and just go with what's right or go with what's true, you know? And that's kind of the Buddhist or Taoist philosophy on trying to find the truth. And I think that that's like, another universal truth like a golden rule. I wouldn't find that other spiritual leaders or gods would say much different than that either, right? Like, you know what the difference between right or wrong is despite what the law is. If, 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 if David was good enough to go and pluck, that's not grown yet, but it's starting, to go and pluck the heads of weed off that shit and feed it to his people and then Jesus does the same on a Saturday, should they be stoned to death for being hungry and eating or walking and enjoying God and enjoying God's creation, you know, to me, and they're already being spiritual anyway, but there's all these crazy rules, which are similar to the lockdown rules we're going on right now. Sabbath was like total lockdown. Like you didn't go anywhere. You didn't do anything. Everything was already done for you the day before, similar to ordering or picking up in a sense, right? Reduced work. <laughs> Someone else's behest in that case, I guess. But you know, it's it's just to sort of show, like, you know, like, stuff like that. It's like, you can figure out what's right and wrong by what your heart tells you on that shit. You know, another example is the fucking buddy's saving his goat that fell down the well. Is he allowed to save his goat that's in the well? Well, yes, that's a good thing to do. He'll taint the damn well when he dies in it and he shits himself because that's usually what happens when you die is you let loose bowel. So, you want a bunch of goat shit in your fucking well? I don't. Save the bastard. You know? He could be a good temple offering. So why would you punish him for trying to save his unblemished goat on Saturday? Come on now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do you really find the truth? You know, and there's a truth in love too, right? Can you find unconditional love in yourself for people? <sighs> Even people you hate? Because you know that if you really know yourself, then you'll know them too, right? And if you can understand people more, you know, like the whole forgive them because they don't know what they're doing thing comes into play. And maybe they say that about you. But if it puts your mind at peace and your actions at peace, then that's worth it. It's worth it to have even a, uh, a system like that where it's everyone just sort of is allowed to have their beliefs and be content. Don't be contentious. I've been off Facebook for a bit again. I got the punt. I got mad at somebody and I called them a bitch. <laughs> and they baited me and I took it. And <laughs> so I got the other 30 day ban oh god so terrible but it's been nice and peaceful though i look at it once in a while to look at like uh investment page that's up for something i'm in to see what kind of news comes out with that once in a while but i've also been able to practice the art of just observing i sat there and i watched today someone posted in one of the clown pages something about Freemasonry. Big, long, five-hour thing from this Australian singer or something, and him talking about a whack of stuff. It's pretty lengthy. Pretty passionate, I would say, too, to go on. I didn't watch the whole thing. It's like, okay, that's heavy. I'm good with my own research, but cool. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, there's a bunch of FMs that are in the clown pages, and these dudes don't post anything, and they're a bunch of boomers. And I'm thinking to myself, what are you dudes even doing here? And you're defending your shit. But I'm banned, so I can't post anything. But I'm thinking, okay, let's have a look at 
uh, the Grand Orient and have let's have a think about that. Would you like to do that, buddy? You're not even allowed to talk about it. What are you even doing here? Fuck right off. You should be secretive. You know, and you're sitting there standing up for something that you're not even allowed to talk about. It's not like that, but I can't say. Fuck off. Okay. I was going to talk about on the next live stream that I do. I'm come, coming up with topics and writing them down here and there, you know, waiting for the moment to pounce. But I was thinking, you know, I talk about all the Freemason experience I have in my life. Because I got some weird shit that's happened to, to me through my life with people I've known and met and things that they've done. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff, right? I mean, uh, speculative and operative. You know, today's operative Masons don't even subscribe to the religion, but we've been given journeyman certificates, essentially, is kind of what it is. So they take away all of the mystery school stuff, and but you're learning to do all the shit that the operatives would have done at one time, where they were all, you know, actively building chapels and beautiful structures that communism is today destroyed. I can't remember the dude's name is Amera Toronto. I had him up on one of my pages I was looking at. I need to find him again. But he underwent a program of destroying all the beautiful architecture in Toronto. And guess what? He's a bloody socialist. And guess what else? You know, I'm not even going to go there right now. But you you can guess. If you're smart, you can guess. So I was sick of watching these cats. And I was sick of watching some of the arguments about other stuff. But I did sit there and I was able to just observe it objectively because I couldn't intervene. I had to just sit there and just take it all in. So, I mean, that was good. And in a sense, me giving my two cents to them wouldn't make a lick of diff anyway. So like I say, they already got their worldview and even in entangling their own lies and whatever else it is they do, that's their worldview, they ain't gonna change it. They're committed to it degrees in. Work and honor and effort and brotherhood and all that shit, they ain't ditching. They are what they are. It's hard to argue with someone like that. And then, Inversely, it's hard for him to argue with you, right? Or if you don't agree, some of the people are in pretty firm disagreement with the dude. Dudes, a couple of them were chiming in, but I've had that happen to myself a few turns or whatever, where some Masonic shit comes up and I'll mouth off, <laughs> and then a bunch of people will rise up to defend it. You know, it's like because there's a lot of people that are connected to people that are in it, right? So, yeah. But anyway, you know, that's just, just ways to think about truth and can, how ways to objectively find it and not to ab absorb yourself with other people's shit. And you don't have to get involved in that fight if you don't need to or don't, don't want your own peace disturbed. And we'll talk about peace too and try to get it in your life right from the beginning of the day and hold it. And that's a possible thing. And then you'll be able to make good, clear, honest decisions true red pill decisions can be made from a mind of peace but a mind of chaos oh that's a different story and i'm sure you know it nah, 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 nah. what's she doing she's not even watching the road laying on her phone